let, let me let me let me move along, man. Um, Fifties of the chaos. Many have seen images from the 1950s of the chaos created when Brown versus the Board of Education ushered in the racial integration of America's schools. Those students on the front lines of the progress felt their fight would lead to more diverse classrooms and better opportunities for students of color. 70 years after that landmark court ruling, our country has a more racially diverse group of students, but many of America's schools have now resegregated. ABC's Ika Jachi explores what that means not only for current, but future students. Just like millions of other high school students, Ava Pittman starts her journey to class taking the bus. But that's where the similarities end. You see, this daily trip starts long before first period, just after dawn breaks. I used to live in Forest Hill, so it was like a 15 minute walk. Um, but now it is probably probably an hour and 30 minutes on the bus. Every morning, Ava makes the 14 mile, hour and a half journey through Queens from Far Rockaway to Elmhurst. Just to get to her school, Mel's, the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School. I have English first period, I have music after, and then I have pre calc which is going to be strenuous. And then after my last class, we have speech and debate practice. So I'll be at practice till around five. Sister knew that math was gonna be hard. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this is, you, you important blacks into these schools because these schools have quotas too. A lot of these schools have diversity quotas, so they're important blacks into these schools from black neighbors. She's probably one of the best students in her little black area, and they poaching them and bringing them to these schools, which makes their schools even worse, makes the black schools even worse. School. I have English first period. I have music after, and then I have pre calc which is going to be strenuous. And then after my last class, we have speech and debate practice. So... I'll be at practice till around 5.15, and I'll probably and won't be home until around like 6.37, depending on how long I have to wait for the bus, the delays. Hopefully any time before 7, I'll be happy with. And then I have to do homework, shower, eat, go to bed. What are the schools like around your neighborhood in Far Rockaway compared to the schools around oh. Mel's in Elmhurst? Schools in certain places like Far Rockaway, it's very, the resources are minimal. It's just the quality of education, it's different. I do a lot of things that are like. Um, those schools get more funding than any other schools. We've already debunked that. It's the sun turds. Yeah, we it's definitely the, know that. It's the sun turds. And she can't say that. And listen, she might not know that because she might have been educated to, with all these big, you know, I guess juice crew words. The juice crew told her all these big words to, to, to like describe what the effect that sons have on a school or area. But I think the problem at her school is that there's the kids come there and it's and it's a social setting. It's not a learning setting. It's a social setting. There's fighting. There's uh, all this other shit going on there that has nothing to do with learning. But she blames it on underfunding and shit like that. Yeah, Gladys. Very interesting, man. Sisters, sisters learn this shit, and she and listen. She's going to grow up to be somebody that'll fucking. You know, vote for Kamala and fucking try to like protest for George Floyd. Schools in certain places like Far Rockaway, it's very, the resources are minimal. It's just the quality of education, it's different. I do a lot of things that are like inside the school that I couldn't take with me to another place, if that makes sense. <sighs> I co-founded a affinity group called BAM, which is Black at Mel's. Um, I'm also part of Education Student Advisory Council. My speech and debate so team. She, she, she started a group called Black at Mel's. So she's already, you know, separated herself and divided. They already have their yeah. own black group. That's what these niggas do. They go 
wherever they go, they gotta have their own black shit. And then, but they're the main ones. Like, man, you know, I don't feel like I'm a part of the institution, and feel like I'm. I feel like I, uh, I, I can't embrace who I am and all that bullshit. Yeah, she stupid, built uh, a university in her neighborhood, so she doesn't have to travel ninety minutes. That's what she wants. Let, let me say this though i don't really disagree with that to be honest because people of different groups should advocate for their different groups the, the problem isn't the advocation the problem is the multiracial state in the first place which is yeah. completely illegitimate my thing is they go to t to these pwis and do this shit. it's like Nigga, why yeah, don't you okay. go to a, a hbcu if you want to be super yeah, yeah, blacked out you. of your mind yeah, they're basically traveling to the PWIs for no other reason other than fucking bullshit to like to start bullshit. Yep. Well, also to to be in a safe environment, like this is not a hood rat. True. Like she not she the the type of the way the girls that go to her probably school that she would probably normally go to in her community, the girls be there are them. probably. You know they probably she 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 seems to be focused on pre calc and you know speech and all this different stuff at school. The girls at her school are, are going to be focused on somebody says something, what they look, what this girl looking at, who she wore your dress you wore the other day. You know they worried about that type of stuff at school. You know it's, oh he cute. Um, I wonder if he still go with so and so. Uh, she talked. I heard so and so talking to your boyfriend. Uh, yeah. you know that, uh, it, it, they she, worry, it, worry about who got the biggest dick and all that. Yeah. shit. Yeah, did you see his print? Oh my god, girl! Like it's like that type of stuff that they're talking about. And she seems like a girl that would probably be out of place in that, you know what I'm saying? And she needs to be around white people. Yeah. Team is the most diverse in our league. One of the There's a lot ones, of Latino people in my school, and then black, and then white, and then Asian. You got a big old book. The opportunity oh, shit. Wait, what? to Ava oh, are geographically oh, that's right there. just to receive it most of her okay. day picking up by her commute. It's kind of big, man. Schools in the U.S. remain deeply divided along racial, ethnic, and economic lines, even as studies show that the K-12 through public school population is becoming more diverse. My elementary school, when I moved to Forest Hills, was very white, um, and it was like me and I think three or four other black kids, and like I struggled with finding people that looked like me and like resonating with what was being taught to me, especially because there were no black teachers. Take me to a world where Ava never left and always went to school around home. What right, do you man. think her school experience would have been like <laughs> that one? Yeah. Honestly, I think she's become a stronger advocate because she got to see the other side from very young. Wow, that's deep. So oh, by shit. sending her away from her that's fucking funny. ghetto into the white, well, the white side of town, she's made her more woke. You can't avoid this shit, white man. People, white people have all this cool stuff, and we don't got shit back where we're from. Even though you have everything, you just degrade it and and, and turn it into shit. But um, we don't. Our shit don't look like there. So I need to be an activist and advocate for my people more. Yikes. Well, Yikes. keep in mind, uh, they they. The, you're kind of putting this this black girl in a in a like a tough place. Like, if she goes to the PWI, she either has to drum up the wokeness and blame gliders for everything, or she has to admit genetic inferiority. It's kind of one or the other. See, bro, He's definitely there's not so many. That. Nobody, but nobody admits the genetic inferiority shit. They could just. It's a thousand different. Excuses you can make. And, and in, I'm a, in the and in school, the they look defense, at me crazy. You you can't you can't really expect a son or any group of people, for that matter, <laughs> to admit genetic inferiority, even if it's true. It, you just you just not a reasonable ex you don't, ex expectation. You don't, think, right? you don't think groups admit genetic inferiority? They do. No, I mean, I they do, do, do sports. It. 
Look at sports. They they yeah they what matter, right? yeah people. It's just it's thing. It's I think it's just certain aspects of a uh, of racial hierarchies that people aren't encouraged or actively discouraged to talk about. I think that's probably one of the main things why we can't even discuss shit like race and IQ dif- differences. All right, well, let, let me put it this way. Like, okay, yeah, you're actually probably right. Like, yeah, people behind closed doors will admit genetic inferiority, fine. But you just can't expect sons to say that out loud because if you do, then that's basically saying all of their problems are their own fucking fault. Well, it, it's it's taboo to talk about if racial differences when you're talking about intelligence. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just all intelligence. Other I mean, shit, people... People admit all types of differences between the races. Oh, besides yeah. No, IQ. yeah, yeah. Besides Obviously, IQ. no, no. I was talking about just strictly intelligence. Oh, yeah. Matters. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Dating with what was being taught to me, especially because there were no black teachers. Take me to a world where Ava never left and always went to school around home. What do you think her school experience would have been like in that world? Honestly, I think she's become a stronger advocate because she got to see the other side from a very young age. You know, we talked about Black history. We talked about the importance of her her identity and how she operates in spaces. But she got to see that everyone doesn't have that. Two things here, man. These fucking glasses that these sisters always wear. They're always like so loud and so ostentatious. And then the fucking, where's the dad, man? Where's her fucking father at? And I'm not the big on the father save the day shit, but where's her fucking dad, man? He never had a dad. He got to see that everyone doesn't have that. 70 years ago, the landmark Brown versus the Board of Education ruling was supposed to make schools more diverse. See this dusted off again? declaring separating children in schools on the basis of race unconstitutional and ushering in integration efforts. But according to the latest U.S. Government Accountability Office investigation of K-12 education, schools are becoming highly segregated again. More than a third of students attend schools where 75% or more students are of a single race or ethnicity. That's how it's supposed to be. It's normal. And you have the fact that where black people live, 80% of black people live in cities. Demo- and most of those cities they live in are Democrat cities. And guess who lives in Democrat cities with, with black people? White liberals. And so this is this segregation. If you just really just take two steps, it's white liberals segregating themselves from sun turds. Because there's not a lot of fucking conservatives in fucking Austin, in Portland, in Seattle, in D.C., in San Francisco, in New York. There's not a bunch of fucking white conservatives, man. These are fucking liberals that are fucking saying, look, we don't want our kids going to school with these apes. Press one. In 1957, three years after the Brown versus the Board of Education ruling, the NAACP attempted to enroll nine black students at Little Rock Central High School. The ensuing chaos gripped the nation and it became known to the media as the Little Rock Nine. The first day is actually significant because it is a mirror image of all the other days. (laughs) We were beaten and pushed and shoved, the stuff was thrown on us, we were picked around. But as I said before, we had taken a vow of nonviolence. We chose not to fight. The governor of Arkansas at the time prevented the students from entering the racially segregated school, using his state's National Guard for help. After weeks of failed attempts to safely get the students through a full day of classes, President Eisenhower intervened. Our enemies are gloating over this incident and using it everywhere to misrepresent our whole nation. Those students today disappointed how much work still needs to be done. Over these 60 plus years, all the uh, achievements that we have made. 
So she was, one of the blacks. she was one of the blacks that was sent to Yeah, yeah she, she was one of the original, uh, some Melungeon, some people melanated, uh, you know, you can't specify what the fuck it actually was in the in the 1400s before the explorers came here. Yes. Corn the mystic. Yeah. <laughs> so these these so these mystic people night. are still rocking and rolling, man. The white man is the, the white country so bad that these people are alive in it. What these people are 80, right? If that happened in the fucking 50s and they were already in high school. These people are 80, right? These they look good, right? No, nah, they look super good for to be old as hell like that. And half of this too. country is faces. now being taken away from us. And if young people don't stand up and stop some of this process and strategize as to how they're going to go about changing these things, or at least put some uh, rudders to what is being changed by others, uh, we, we're in a, in, a, in a mess here. When you look at American history, what you will find is a consistent. So I think that's her right there. Willingness to support segregated society. That is the main focus. But you can't stop working for it in any case. Right. You have Dang, to be fully they all alive? Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> Yo. Especially for sons. Sons die early. Country. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, what a terrible country, man. With all these fuck, every last one of one, three. No, yeah, all of them are alive. Wow, what a terrible country, man. A horrible, and, lot is a terrible people. We and failed. And a country right that was the, the demographic makeup of this rogues gallery right here, it would be Haiti. <laughs> you know, and you hear how they said, um, you know, so much has, so much progress has been made, but you know, we're still not done. You know, we, we haven't reached that that perfect goal that that none of us can fucking even yeah, tell you it is. Yeah, like what's the goal, man? The but fuck, like they 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 expect perfection out of gliders. They 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 think that perfection can be reached with, with gliders. They believe in them. Well, I think the expected goal is like total white displacement and erasure while also simultaneously like kick out all the whites but somehow still keep the white man society up and going it to the same standard that's the goal impossible impossible right but unless you have superhuman powers how are you going to change it unfortunately we have come away from our commitment to the spirit of brown um schools have been resegregating rapidly since the 1980s so let's think about designing for diversity saba burita co-founded brown's promise alongside Ari americana it's an initiative working to combat racial segregation and honor the legacy of the little rock nine students why are our schools still segregated today it's uh multi faceted big question i think it is largely because because people like you would never send your kids to the fucking school where the black kids go to even if it was across the street from your fucking house you take a fucking second and third job and you'd forego your fucking vacation and you'd fucking take a hardship on your 401k to fucking send your kid to private school so they wouldn't have to go to school with little fucking orangutans. Wicked. Is that a white woman or a juice crew in your mind? This one right here, I would... Are they all the same? Uh, I would say juice crew. I thought, what does she consider herself? I don't know. What do you think? Juice crew. Okay, so you can tell too then. So you see the juice crew. I can't tell. But, I, <laughs> but there are the times when you cannot tell, Gladder King. No, no Ari. Doubt. Oh yeah, Ari. That's a that's a that, that, that Ari. Ari is a, is kind of like it sounds like a juice. I knew I knew some juice people named Ari, but they were guys and it was spelled with an I. If you gotta go off the name, like come on, the they changed. I, did, I, too. Did, I could tell by her facial structure. Okay. The name is often uh, used oh, Expand upon that. Schnauzer, the schnauzer. Yeah, the schnauzer. Is that what you're going off of? 
Yeah, and also just like it's just kind of like intuition. It's like what's what's the Folks difference between the like eyes. soft? What, what's the difference between soft, soft and hardcore porn? You just kind of know once you see it. It's well, just kind of your so, intuition. So, so do gliders do gliders not have schnozzes? No, of course some of us do. Okay, but what you're saying. Okay, well, okay, well, the, the main the main premise here is that basically. If you're within the group, it's easier to tell apart versus people that are outside of the group. Does that make sense? Maybe so, so maybe so, so, but nonetheless, you I mean you the examples that you gave me, you kind of sound like mystic a little bit. Like you were not necessarily clear when I asked you a specific question, but that's okay, brother. You man. Well, well sorry, what was the question? Repeat it. What what are you going off of when you say that you could tell the difference from her? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, the schnauzer, that's one of it. Kind of the eyes as well. How close they are to the nose, like yeah, and the forehead too, the hairline. So, so they got Sometimes like. Sometimes it's the chin. They got like a, a receding hairline. Like what, what you mean by that too? And also for horns. also for the the air sniffer men, like the the hairline, it balds differently. It's a more Middle Eastern balding pattern than what white folk get. We get a more like uh, you know Christopher Ooh. Nolan. Uh -huh. Christopher mm -hmm. Nolan, he has like the. You know, like uh, the the pattern where it doesn't thin in the front yet, but on the sides, that's what like white people get. But for mm. Juice Crew, they get more of like the Doctor Phil. Okay, well, you, I, you guy, will you at least say Jews look like gliders? Like they look very, they can look damn near indistinguishable. Yeah, no doubt, but yeah, that's that's like it's it's kind of okay. It's kind of like Wicked, like Wicked. Are Mexicans yeah. fully Indian? No, there's an overlap between Indians and you know but, colonizers. So it's the same kind thing. Of a, that's kind of different, though, isn't it? That feels different. How's it different? I, I mean, it's obvious the difference between the pre umbritos and the umbritos, right? And we understand why the difference is there, right? But it's right. It's okay, obvious. and then and then for the Jews crew, there's definitely more overlap. I'm not denying that, but. I'm telling you, like it's it's really not that hard to to distinguish, yeah. especially when you put the name on top of it, <laughs> and when you put in like the position that this lady is in right now, where she's talking about fucking desegregating schools and bringing in yeah. immigrants. I, I'll give you that. I'll give you the talking points, but they do change their names, also, right? They they're known to usually do the that giveaway well. though is the giveaway is when you when you see them rubbing their hands together greedily at the side of a car. <laughs> points <laughs> Cl clinch into their pennies or what? <laughs> Yes. Salute. Let me um <laughs> let me let me um salute the um Ray Boy. He says, What up, Ox? Shout out to the European Glider for <laughs> standing up. Yeah, salute to him, man. God damn. Standing up, standing up the suns. He would make his ancestors proud. When is when is America where when is the American glider going to stand up? Um, obviously, I think with American Glado can't stand up unless the Juice Crew um allows them to. According, uh, to I mean, oh man, the salute. Um, let me. Hey, all um, the people in Liechtenstein you know, should take the five franc challenge. You know. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> support the channel, guys. I mean, you you don't learn this stuff anywhere else, man. It's the only channel for. Uh, intellectuals, man. For 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 learning people, man. It's like right. um. You know, right. only the only channel where we where they talk about stuff like this. I mean, you could go to other channels and talk about this stuff, but it'd just be ten mystic fillies <laughs> um, talking about shit that they can easily Google in two seconds. Right, just go handle a lunch and screaming at each other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Shout out to Mystic Philly in the chat, yeah, bro. Shout out to Mystic Philly in the building, yeah. man. Yeah. Mystic yeah. Philly in the building, but, man. But, but I, um, I mean, people don't. I don't think people. Under, I mean. The gravity of what you just said. Think about that. That's important. What you just said. I. Where else can you go yeah. get this man? I'm, I mean, I want to know. Nowhere. Um. Nowhere. Uh. On YouTube. I don't know, man. I don't know. But I've been asking for a while. But. Me too. Uh, I mean, yeah, there yeah. is a. There's one channel I know at least. It's called <laughs> I Hypocrite. He's a good what one. Is, what is he? He's a glider, of course. But is he in America? Is he in uh Yeah, he's a Canadian that moved to the US. I hypocrite? From? How do you yeah. spell it? I hypocrite. How the fuck is hypocrite? The, like the letter I or H Y H Y P O crit? Yes, H Y P O C R I T E. 
So, so does he have panels as well? Are they like discussing it, or is he just? He has a call-in show every day. It's oh, called okay. the, the the Daily Cope, and he had maybe you saw um, one of his. I mean, his most popular show is called uh, "You Can't Stop Progress." It's amazing. You should watch it. It's really mm. good. What, what is that? That's is, so. Is it similar to Agnation? No, the "You Can Stop Progress" is uh, just a bunch of clips of uh, you know the new global homo world and the madness and. But watch it on Rumble because it's uncensored. There, it's it's really good. It's been going on for years, and it's really well made. The the oh, closest sure. thing I could think of I, to this is honestly Twitter, but here we like dissect it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Twitter's like yeah. raw and unfiltered, but I can't think of anything else, man. I want to know though. Tell me. Yeah, let's let's move along though. Let's see let's see what what else is going. On. Let's move along. How are you gonna change it? Unfortunately, we have come away from our commitment to the spirit of Brown. Um, schools have been resegregating rapidly since the 1980s. So let's think about designing for diversity. Saba Barita co-founded Brown's Promise alongside Ari Americana. It's an initiative working to combat racial segregation and honor the legacy of the Little Rock Nine students. Why are our schools still segregated today? It's uh, multi faceted big question i think it is largely because we don't talk about it we can't and we won't fix what we don't talk about and recognize (laughs) following the landmark brown versus the board decision students started getting bused into schools from different neighborhoods to promote integration but much of that stopped starting in 1980 costly busing orders began to expire And with a history of housing discrimination leading many neighborhoods to be segregated by race, for millions of students, going to the public school closest to your home means it won't be racially diverse. Despite the billions of dollars invested to desegregate public schools over the last few decades, today, school segregation... You Gladys have spent billions of dollars to desegregate schools. And it's still not enough. You can't, bro. It's DNA. The, the money pay, right? I... <laughs> Yo, you just took a billion dollars and threw it in the Atlantic Ocean. Housing discrimination leading many neighborhoods to be segregated by race. For millions of students, going to the public school closest to your home means it won't be racially diverse. Despite the billions of dollars invested to desegregate public schools over the last few decades, today, school segregation is back at the same level it was in the 1960s. So basically... Like we said, you took a billions of dollars because he said billions with us, and threw it into the fucking South Pacific Ocean. <laughs> also, it's, it's worth pointing out, like during these quote unquote times of desegregation. Yeah, okay, maybe it's desegregated in the in the uh, idea that like there are literally black and white kids sharing a classroom. Fine, but once the recess bell rings. They all go into the little groups. Like there, there was never a process of desegregation. This never happened. Yeah, the white kids are going home after school. The black kids are hanging around, like getting into mischief and shit. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. That's yeah. This is sad, man. This is this is really, really, really fucking sad, man. School segregation is persistent and it plagues us across the country and across the years, unfortunately. And I I wish I could say there was a place that had had solved it. According to data collected by the Department of Education, between 2022 and 2023, amongst 100,000 public schools across the country, about 83% of black public school students and 82% of Latino students attended a majority non-white school. At the same time, 75% of white public school students were enrolled in a majority white school. We talk a lot about the importance of school integration to the health of our democracy. Students who continually are growing up in segregated environments are not interacting with people from different backgrounds. So when they get into higher ed or they get into the career, into their careers, and they've never worked with someone who is from a different race or a different socioeconomic background, that causes friction. That's such a great point. At a recent conference in Baltimore, Saba and Ari met with education leaders to discuss solutions. Educators are making a major nothing but women. Chicks. Look at this. Look at this shit. Yeah, that's the problem. Fat chicks too. Fat women, fucking white, a bunch of fat white women. Yeah, probably don't have education kids. leaders to discuss solutions. 
like yo, it's literally all women. Look, Ari met with education lead. All, all big mix. <laughs> a lot course. of them don't have kids, and that's a big problem, I think, in the teaching but, world. But they got a son, man, though. You know that. They got a son. Yeah, man. A son. yeah these two uh, big mech glabbit queens right here. It's got a son, man. man. White a son. dirt dolphin. Yeah, uh, this is some man dig, digging them gut, digging them guts out. That's a green card right there. We need a lot of baby oil for this one. Yeah, yeah, you gonna have to get a get an industrial sized bottle of uh, baby Jimmy oil for that one. contact stat. The fat family <laughs> size. Jeez. You gonna have to get the uh, the the Diddy the Diddy book um the Diddy promo <laughs> promo code. The economy size bottle signed by P. Diddy. Uh, yikes. Jeez. Leaders to discuss solutions. Educators are making a major push toward public magnet schools, okay, in particular, brother. which offer specialized courses and programs designed to attract a more diverse yeah. student body. They offer theme programming that you can't get in other schools and students and families find that valuable. And what they in particular find important is the opportunity to go to a school that's integrated where students can learn alongside students from different racial, ethnic, socioeconomic backgrounds and they engage in a pluralistic society in a way that they wouldn't otherwise be prepared to do if they were in a traditional public school. <laughs> Ava, enjoy even at a young age, is also fighting for diversity and, most importantly, integration in public schools. She's a youth advocacy director at Integrate NYC, a youth-led organization aimed at creating equity in New York City schools. Power to the youth. Integrate NYC is currently in a legal battle with New York State. According to the Civil Rights Project, New York is one of the most diverse states in the nation, yet at the same time, one of the most segregated. In the lawsuit against the state, Integrate NYC claims the sorting and admission process in New York City schools forces students of color to be channeled into the most overcrowded and under-resourced schools across the city. The New York City Department of Education sent us a statement saying in part, we agree with the plaintiffs that achieving those educational goals is made harder by the complex system of biases, inequities deeply rooted in this country's history, culture and institutions, <laughs> a system that we also want to change. Uh, but this lawsuit is not the answer. We are prepared to defend against these claims. And so they're suing the fucking state of New York because White liberals don't want to send their kids to school with fucking many orangutans. That's a lot of words to say I'm not racist. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a racial jungle. I right, come on now. I'm telling you, man. Court. Ava is even taking her fight from the streets of New York City to the halls of Washington, D.C. Yo, so she's already doing activism. So she's this is her purpose in life. She had the good fortune to go to a mostly white school. And you can tell because of the way she talks and carries herself that it had an effect on her. But this is this is her reaction to it, is to try to undo whatever opportunity she got from that. Stir up trouble. And uh, kind of like, you know, uh, everybody tell everybody she meets that, you know, uh, white people are, you know, doing some crooked business. <laughs> Yeah, but the weird thing is when they say they want diversity, what they really mean is they want to be close to white people because they know deep inside that if they're being taught by white people, their education is going to be better, right? They're going to be safer in the white school yeah, too. Yeah, it's going to be safe for the classroom. <clears throat> the classroom is going to be quiet. Yeah, the teachers. Exactly quiet. Yeah. The but, other kids are gonna be doing work, so you can actually like exactly. find somebody. Like in her in her black school, there's nobody that she can say, "Hey, girl, let's go have a study hall. Let's go. But what, um, let's you know." Right, but what's the price for this? You know, for this so-called uh, diversity is that uh, white the white students they're gonna you know their education is gonna go down because they will have to adapt the curriculum. You know, and I mean, there's a certain to... amount that it can sustain until it tips over to. Yeah, like, but the yeah. percentage is really low. If it's 20 students yeah. in a class, you can't have more. You can't have more than five POCs in a classroom. Well, glad that'll I be the least of their problems. That. Well, that'll be the least. You get of their more than problem, five. Bro. They start. Yeah. 
they start eating the class pets. I'd you know, say it takes three. <laughs> when I when I went to middle school, there was thirty of us in a class. If there's like two or three sons, it's 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 done. It's over. Yeah, I mean, ideally, it would be just one in the class. So, what is so the fucking what do like sons do though? Like, like what is what do sons do to um? They can't what stop they... talking. They can't stop like essentially raping the white mm-hmm. girls. Like they're just yeah. like they're basically beasts. Like they just do what a beast does essentially. God damn! Where'd you go to school? Compton, Canada. Like, uh, it, like the, the it it is kind of crazy. Just like the intensity and like desire that these son these son boys really they're like fourteen right have for white girls and they just keep chasing them. They never stop being a class clown. Like they're violent. <clears throat> it's just a mess, man. I remember the problem is also the teacher in my seventh grade reading class. The problem also we live in a climate where gliders are told they're being racist just for existing and if you have only one son in the classroom all the other glider kids they're gonna hold back you know and not live their culture not be themselves Mm -hmm. and they're always on their toes right so even that just creates this aura of of, you know interesting point fear You, you have to be fearful around them because anything you do could be interpreted as racist right could be the smallest oh, thing ever, and uh, right. just gonna... I, I, I like I like your hair, yeah. girl. Racist, right? <laughs> yeah, the workplace. You know, oh yeah, where that. It's crazy. And you know, you know, they're gonna have to defend themselves from all these random gliders trying to touch their hair. Right. <laughs> it's really the other way around. I, white people are not interested in touching kinky black hair. I gotta be honest with you. It's the other it's way around. The other way yeah, around. the girls do. The other way the girls, they love touching hair. But yeah, yeah, African uh, Af- uh, black girls love. I mean, look at wh- who's who's doing everything to make their hair look like the other. Yeah. Like they like, call it their crown, right? So yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> Come on, let's stop it. Um, Spyro is even hey. taking her fight from the streets of New York City to the halls of Washington, D.C., speaking on a student led panel during Attorney General Merrick Garland's remarks on the 70th anniversary of Brown versus. Right, wait, is that a white guy or what? A separate but equal has no place. Moderated by Brown's promise. Majority black and brown. Look at her. Look, she's up on stage at the fucking, with the, the fucking Attorney General and shit. And yeah, you know, she's and, and and she would probably you would probably talk to her and you would probably think like she's living in a hell, her you know, a personal hellscape. <laughs> if you if she just described her like if you didn't know her like like if you had never seen this and you just like you know what I'm saying like struck up a conversation with her, you probably think she was living in in a, in a, in just in a, in a straight up like goddamn dystopian hellscape. But this is her life, man. It's very good, man. Very good life she's living, man. Shout Those out to Mary. Who like uh, being lack resources. Um, they won't have AP classes. They won't have sports teams. Yeah, but here's the thing, sis. Educators sense. and educators. Um, the, the, them niggas ain't taking no AP courses, man. Uh, well, uh, stop it. Especially not in anything STEM related. And they they do have them. There's just no fucking demand for them. Stop it. Stop this thing that blacks are clamoring at, at Martin Luther King Jr. High School, Booker T. G- uh, Washington High School. Blacks are like, you know what, man? This place would be is great, but it, 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 it you know, would make a better man. AP fucking biology, man. Wicked, what is this? Run this guy's genealogy for me, Wicked. What is this? This one here, I'm going to say Juice Crew. Oh, how did you know? Is there any particular tells from his face you can tell? The schnoz? Is it the schnoz? I'd say the fucking everything, to be honest. <laughs> the I, facial I was, features I say, together. I, I was going to say his uh, his skin tone, like That too? Yeah. But, like, I'll admit, like, the, the area, the chick before, she's a more glider type, no doubt. This guy is a more, you know, half and half, kind of like you and the Indian type of thing, right? Like, more half and half mixture. Uh, mm. I, I don't see. It. I mean, like you said, maybe you see something I don't. But he looks like a glider. Yeah, definitely, he looks like a glider. His family changed the name from from Garfinkel to Garland. That's what I'm mm. saying. They changed their name, that bro. That schnoz 
and the and the distance between the eyes are like that. No, nah, that's not a glider, or at least not a full glider. Mm. Moderated by Brown's promise. Majority black and brown schools will like be lack resources. Um, they won't have AP classes. They won't have sports teams. Educators and integration advocates have tried for years. You just say black and brown schools won't have sports teams. But they will have rowing. They will have a rowing team. Yeah, of course not, because nobody wants to fucking do rowing. They probably no won't have an archery team either. They won't have a lacrosse team. They won't have a fucking badminton team. But they'll definitely have the sports that fucking centers love to play. What is she talking about? The crazy thing is she said, said they the lack resources. Talent. Imagine, like, after these decades of pumping trillions and dollars into their communities they still tell you they're lacking resources it's absolutely it's appalling yes yeah, gaslighting it's beyond gaslighting it is um, they won't have crazy. AP classes they won't have sports teams educators and integration advocates have tried for years to get the federal government to have a bigger role in supporting school desegregation a spokesperson for the U.S. Department of Education sent us a statement saying in part the department has supported voluntary school integration through local partnerships with parents, educators, and communities, addressed disparities in funding and resources for schools, and issued guidance and funding to support a more diverse educator workforce. So many people here today, you changed the world. The Biden administration announced last year they'd created a new $10 million grant to fund school integration efforts. Just a small portion of the $100 million the administration has tried to get Congress to put towards this effort. Unless something is done to improve school integration, Ava, like thousands of other students across the country, will have to keep fighting for their education and the opportunities that come with it. How do you fix this here in New York City? Can you, and what does that actually look like? Young people are the only people in New York City, like high schools, public schools. So we need to listen to our demands because they're very important. And we shape the future. Yeah, kids it's usually have it all figured out. Examining another aspect of education, our thanks to Ike Jachi for that. Yeah, our family like struggles to deal with an... It's just, it's just... What's that? She like Kamala Harris and her prom before mine too. Kamala Harris. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's just so the gaslight man the fact that you glad is like literally like eat yeah. that shit. you know it, it's crazy to think act that there's like no light at the end of the tunnel yet like we're not close to the i mean am i wrong we're nowhere near the mean, what could change it's, there's nothing that can change like we're, we're like not money. even halfway through i don't think Money isn't going to fix this problem, you know. You know what was it recently in Baltimore? They like not one kid in all the the uh, school yeah. district had met him, you know. And they're they're spending whatever the number is thirty forty thousand dollars per student per year to yeah. use that. And none of them were proficient in like math or reading. None of them were great. No. To have to have a whole school, like to have basically, I think it was thirteen high schools where you, you didn't have one. I mean, not one. Like you listen, man. You should be able to go A B C D A B C D down to multiple choice on one of them standardized tests and accidentally. Yeah. Get they didn't That's even get up. None yeah. of them got lucky. Like, <laughs> Just, God, man. you know, they didn't do well in the tests because they were up. They were up all night studying for their AP exams. Yeah, with their dads. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It's like, it's like, yo, that is, that should be something that, that, that just stops people in their tracks. It says, yo, what? I mean, I mean, they'll probably just say, you know, there's no dads in the home. Black women are 
you know, like remember the reason these niggas retarded, something like that. And it really is gliders paying for all this. They make up the tax base that supports all this crap. Yeah, that's the that's one of the the lesser talked about things when these niggas are always complaining about shit. It's like nigga, y'all don't put in y'all y'all not even really putting in on this shit. Niggas are a net negative on the tax base to the tune of billions of dollars every year. And they still don't tip. It's crazy. Yeah, all this free shit. Get to just drain lighter pockets decade after decade and still complain that nothing's being... They say that these niggas not even trying to help black people out. <laughs> They're gaslighting, bro. But I keep telling y'all. A nefarious stop. parasite. Just stop. stop. Niggas can lie, man. Nigg we we got to stop acting like niggas can't lie about shit. These niggas are lying to your face. You're saying the part about AP want want AP courses. Why would you want if 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 you can't even be proficient at this rudimentary math mathematics? Why the fuck would you want AP courses? If you think about if it's if, just marketing. They said, yeah, but no. If you said okay, we had two students at each of these high schools that was proficient then you can at least say hey man those two kids could do ap when you have none and you talk about well the white people have ap courses and we don't <laughs> like, come on man but that to a glider sounds like oh what a grave injustice here's more money yeah, yeah. definitely they don't, they don't they don't understand that the ap course would be you know a, a cavern an empty room in that school <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be a way to the um some Sunman uh superintendent to get caught up fucking uh skimming off skimming money off the top and shit. So some so son superintendent go to prison. <laughs> uh, the, the AP course money he done pocketed it and shit. Yeah, for all the books they bought. Yeah, man. Wow. Wow. Un fucking believable man i mean i think uh a lot of this would a lot of these things black people complain about i think i think we could alleviate a lot of this if we just say damn if we just ponder just ponder for one moment yo what if niggas are retarded maybe just it's not ponder. everybody else maybe yeah maybe us. Maybe we just retarded. Like that explains way more than this big ass conspiracy. It's like when you're disconnected from the internet, you think, is it maybe that my cord is disconnected or that everybody else in the world also is not able to connect to the internet? What do you think is more likely? Mm. It's usually yeah, really and I want to come to school. I mean, you know, I don't want to come. Why not? Because I want to finish and get it over with. I don't want to let them mess up our senior year. I know what. But who messed it up? Everybody. These people that are doing yeah. all this. The boycott. Yeah. The boycotters. Yeah. Well, I got one more year, so why not go get it over with? Ain't no use listening and letting mess up the senior year. I think that's what my. This is a uh, Charlotte school when they when they seg when they desegregated schools in Charlotte in the early seventies. Salute to Sammy the Bull, man. He said these sons suffer survivor guilt, sending five dollar cash out. Salute to you, man. Bug off says, but that Dutch looking chick that everyone thinks is Juice Crew, look up Anna Kendrick and then look up her ancestry. Okay, Anna Kendrick, man. Okay. Um, do your Salute own research. To boy, Gina. Smack that <laughs> like. Like it's secure as mic. Yeah, man. It's, hit the like button. Support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, and Super Chat. Yeah. Um, when I just. the it. Library of Congress and read about it. Yeah, like, what's up with this whole, you know, you're going to have to find out yourself. Just tell us, bro. Damn. What happened? It's a boycott. That's what's going to happen. White school boycotts in the South this small have generally been long on talk and short on performance. There's more performance here, but
but school officials still pronounced themselves well pleased by the orderly turnout of black and white students. Foster Davis, CBS News, Charlotte, North Carolina. In the middle of a dusty day. That is what the court is being asked to decide. The issue is cross-bussing to achieve racial balance, but the legal question is reasonableness. That is what the court is being asked to decide. Whether these buses shall be the means to establish a 70 to 30 white to black ratio in every school in Charlotte and Mecklenburg County. Think about that, man. I mean, if it, if your state or country or whatever cannot guarantee you the ability or the right to self-association, that's an illegitimate state. That's how I see it. Yeah, they had to do all this shit. Yeah, this Imagine state's got to go, man. It's just not, it's not it. Imagine being forced to have to go to lunch and, and be in a classroom with these goddamn apes. Dude, Yo, I, and the I, ratio is seven to three. What the fuck? Yeah, they really, I, they're really pounding on you there. That seven to three ratio. Yeah, I know. Yo, I, I can't, I can't imagine being a father. I can, I mean, at least me, you know, being a father and then having this thrown on us. I can't even imagine how overwhelming that would be. I'd be so fucking yeah. angry, you know. Yeah. That one blonde girl will be prey. Like I've seen it with my own eyes. Like it's just, nah. If you, yeah. you like. If if you're a good father, you're obligated to protect your daughters yeah. from being sexually assaulted and raped by son men. Well, uh, well, how was Stern said? How was Stern talked about it? How when he was going to his son's school, they were beating his ass every day. <laughs> yeah, man. Man. Well, how was Stern? Stern? There goes Evil Knievel, across 38 buses. When it comes to protecting constitutional rights of my okay. children, uh, I don't think that the expense involved or any, even the inconvenience involved to a school board is necessarily the test of reasonableness. Uh, the test of reasonableness is that which will, in fact, accomplish what the Constitution requires, and we think that what that requires is... Uh, complete integration of the schools. It turned out three liberal members of us. The... These niggas sound way more, you know. Well, so the Constitution wasn't written for them, you know. The, the presence yeah. of sun is just an unlucky side effect of, of some industry that used to be around in the past. So yeah, The Constitution a... was written for gliders and not for suns. In my yeah, it was written for three white men. Of, uh, yeah, if, what were the upstanding characters? Sure. Yeah, if they knew back in the day how America would look today, yeah, they would have Negro slaves. They yeah. probably would have genocide and niggas. Did, <laughs> if they could, if they could <laughs> see in the future, they probably would have just got niggas to fuck out the paint one way or the other. Well, they yeah, tried. They, they, so tried. they did try to send them back after nah, slavery. They, they, they would have handled it like those back then. The glass, yeah. I got faith in those gliders back then. They they probably would have got that shit handled. It was the greed of certain gliders though that brought some people here in the first place and kept them. And like the problem is the issue too. Like the, this is the also you know this is the other side of the but, coin that doesn't get. But it makes but that makes sense. Huh? I mean, it was what it was back in the day. We can't judge them by today's standard. Right. Well, this it is why was. I blame the ancestors. Like the biggest crime that was ever committed was bringing the African <laughs> to the new world. Yes. Yeah, and who brought them? It wasn't gliders who brought them over here. Well, That's it was right. gliders who demanded them. Over right. Here, though, exactly. Largely. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. There, but who was, do you blame? Yeah, you do can't you blame, blame the people doing the supplying if there's the demand? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, kind of. You can blame the drug dealer for supplying both. drugs. Right? Yeah, both. I think both share blame, of course, right? Nah. Yeah, but one seems more blamed than the other. Uh, That's I, think true. So, I, think I think it's, it's like a chicken and egg argument. Too, you know? I, I, I like to think of uh, the early days of slavery in this country as us supporting black-owned businesses. 
<laughs> but what do you think? Are the buyer or the seller? I think the buyer, right? I think I think the fact that to say that whites didn't want didn't want slaves is crazy. To like, say. come on, the problem was yeah, that come on. Many people, you know, didn't want to and largely couldn't sugar work their like sugar plantations and shit. Yes, sugar was sugar was once once they once they discovered sugar, that shit was bigger than crack or fucking fentanyl or any drug meth yep. or whatever. True. Yeah, and you had to use absolute slowly. brutality to harvest it for a long time. So they could have used the Irish. They could have worked the Irish to death, and I think that probably would have been better for the future. <laughs> they tried. The keep, keep using the Irish? Yeah, it would have been infinitely better. Yeah, but they didn't have sunscreen back in the day, so that was the problem. Well, they would have died import. in droves, but yeah, you know, progress. I mean, yeah. they had Irish... Uh, the school board and placed its own can. Wait, so what did you say? Yeah, which which one? Which one deserves more blame, the buyer or the seller? I think I think whites are very complicit in this in the slave trade, man. I mean, the the blame. I mean, the Jews, of course, financiers and underwriting, but the the crews on those ships were white and the. Um, the way a lot of people tell it, it's like the Jews were running all the ships to supply you know the black slave owners in America right. with slaves. It's like wait a minute, oh, hold on. Right, it was a big conspiracy. Nah, it was like it was a natural. It's on the gliders, man. No, look at it this way. Look at this way. Alone to Dude. secure the ship, you know. It's not the gliders. Think... There was no glider demand for African slaves in the United States and South America. I hold y'all to a high standard, man. Y'all gotta take like, some of this up. Look at it this way. Do you think you could ever convince the Chinese at the same time period to take in slaves to do? any type of work yeah period. the chinese did have slaves at the same time yeah. period to do their agricultural yeah. work it was called serfdom okay well, but were they bringing chinese in africans slaves. on they mass? didn't need to they had hundreds of millions of their own peasants koreans, to do it yeah. right koreans, and I, okay. koreans, they stay in they had absolutely no need to import people for slavery they had plenty of slaves Okay, there, was point being is, there was a huge need to import yeah, labor that could do the work in the america hey, let me talk so let me talk man Point being is they were they're so naturally xenophobic that even if they did not have that surplus labor, no matter what, they would never put any okay, sort of thing that's over a their own argument home. anyway. I mean, it just there, there was no demand for it over there, like and as a, as an import item, and there was in the United States. Okay, but my point it. being is that among the gliders, we had to balance a homogenous society versus the demand, and we fucking failed. And what I'm saying in in this, if you could just think for a moment about this kind of thought experiment I'm putting forward, let's say the Chinese did have a demand, theoretically, they would never have taken the deal. They would have went, no, fuck it, it's not worth it. That's the point I'm trying to make to you. Yeah, yeah I also, I think principle. gliders back in the day, they thought they're just going to repatriate sons after they're done with them, but it never happened. The truth is they didn't give it enough forethought. And yeah, don't care because exactly. it wasn't going to be a problem in their lifetime. Like... And they were more focused on getting rich. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, oh, yeah. to be clear, like when, when gliders came over, right, they didn't think of it like uh, a new country for gliders. That kind of came later. Like they were still part of like the crown, the colonies, right? Like so yeah. all those people, like most slaves went to Brazil and they just worked the fuck out of them and just enriched the country of Portugal through through that means. They didn't really think about it as like, oh, we're going to take over this new land and be the new natives. That kind of happened afterwards. And then it was too late because we bought, well, brought too many mystics here. They didn't think of it as a new country for gliders because uh, that thought didn't even exist that you would have a mixed country. It was like an alien thought to have, you know, it was... They yeah. Down on the Melungeons being here. Yeah, right. Yeah, they just like, came here to... To get to get to get that bag, that was the main thing. Which will, in fact, accomplish what the Constitution requires, and we think that what that requires is uh, complete integration of the schools. It turned out three liberal members of the school board and placed its own candidates in their place. It gathered some 60,000 names on petitions opposing what it calls arbitrary racial balance, and it sent them and one of their leaders to a White House meeting with aides to President Nixon. We appreciate all the help we did. If you're out of town, it's probably happening in your town too, so help us a lot. Well, I'll be leaving. I'm, of course, I don't know anything about the bus times yet, but um, I'll be leaving my house probably somewhere around 7 or maybe earlier in the morning, and uh, I'll have to cross two major arteries to get to West Charlotte. And I can imagine that it's going to be pretty much of a mess. I think it's just got to be done. 
you've got a bus people if once people you know i found i've traveled and once you get to know people they're not they're not different it's just the same all over i've talked to quite a few students and they're getting fed up with all this hassle court hassle and all this sort of stuff and they just as soon just go and go to school and get it over with they uh they don't like the idea of being bust and all but but I don't think there's going to be any violence, you know, yeah. of it's, any it's, kind. It's the parents. The parents. The that's parents. it. They're the ones who will uh, cause the violence if there is any uh, really big violence. The parents are uptight and the students are. Uh, yes, sir. That's what it brought. That's right. I think sure. it's up to the students. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just up to the students whether they will accept it or not. And I think we will. But as he said, it's the parents. It has excellent copy quality. Oh, it's extremely reliable and comes with IBM service. It's easy to use. And it's very, very, very small. The IBM Executive Copy. When court ordered oh, school busing for desegregation began in Los Huh? Oh, those kids were from Charlotte. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder what they think nowadays. If they those still have the same. Old. They're boomers. They're probably woke as fuck. Los Angeles in September 1978. Some officials were jubilant. Said one advocate, "The schools did open uneventfully, peacefully, decently, and well. But whether busing reached a dead end or only a detour." The program came to a halt last night. And Linda Douglas now reports on what happened today. Most of the half million children in the Los Angeles school district have been wow. untouched by the three-year-old mandatory busing plan. Fewer than one quarter of the city's students are white, simply not enough to integrate the primarily Hispanic and black schools. Nevertheless, 23,000 children have been riding buses anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour to achieve integration. And the anti-busing majority on the L.A. school board today claimed permanent defeat for busing and a victory for education. Busing has not only been a tremendous financial and educational burden on this district, it's helped destroy support for public education, has helped divert scarce staff and teacher resources from our true mission of education. Segregated education cannot be praised uh, in, any, in any stretch of the imagination, and the, those members of the school board who are praising the separation of races uh, at this day and age are acting very irresponsibly. In the meantime, most of the children in the busing program chose to stay there rather than disrupt the school year. But more than 7,000 youngsters did return to their neighborhood schools today. I don't like my child on a bus for two hours a day, wasting her time and uh, possibly interrupting her ability to, uh, to get her studies done. For some children, the prospect of a new school in mid-year was too much to bear. Many others seemed relieved. Because I don't really like riding on the bus that much. Why not? Because I have to wake up so early in the morning. One federal judge said over the weekend the district can legally abandon busing as a remedy for segregation, but he added the basic right of Los Angeles minority children to an equal education remains unsolved. Linda Douglas, CBS News, Los Angeles. Late this afternoon, the NAACP asked Justice Rehnquist for permission to withdraw its appeal for busing reinstatement. Well, foes of busing as a last resort for desegregation may take comfort in today's news from Los Angeles, but as Ed Rabel reports, a similar program seems to be rolling along in another community 10 years after many observers said it wouldn't work. It has transcended almost all of the other emotional issues which tore the nation in the 60s and 70s. It is something almost everybody agrees on. They hate it. Even the president is against it. I am heart and soul in favor of the things that have been done under the name of civil rights, desegregation, and so forth. I happen to believe, however, that busing uh, has been a failure and is not accomplishing the purpose, uh, a worthwhile purpose that gave it birth. Yeah. 
There are children here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and adults, too, who do not agree with President Reagan. It's time to come together to celebrate, they say. It's time to come together. That's what blacks had in mind 10 years ago when they successfully pressed the courts to quicken the pace of desegregation here through busing, making Charlotte the place where it all began. It was a bad beginning. Students clashed, police were sent in, parents were bitter, whites fled to private schools, test scores dropped drastically, and all any... Whites fled to private schools and test scores dropped drastically. <laughs> 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 you know, that's crazy. Mm. It's mm. Wow. I mean, like, wow. White school, whites fled the schools and test schools dropped drastically. I mean, it's pretty much just white people fled the X and the b beneficial aspects of society went down. D does anyone know what they truly think is going to happen? Like, do, do they think if we have a bunch of white people and some sons that like through osmosis or like we like we like give off some energy or like some like fucking ether that we're going to like somehow make the sun smarter just by being in the same location. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, they think they, those people think that uh, racism and poverty and all those things are the reason sons um, present like fucking morons. So that's, that's what it is. Students clashed, police were sent in, parents were bitter, whites fled to private schools, test scores dropped drastically, and all anybody seemed to be talking about was busing. But what Charlotte finally talked itself into was making it work. I would say the folks in Charlotte, both black and white, knuckled under to an idea that if we absolutely had to do this, we were going to make it work as best we could for the children. I think it was more in terms of... Uh leaders coming forth and suggesting to the community that this was perhaps the right thing to do. It was more important to the community to implement the change effectively than to raise obstacles and cause problems for students and teachers and, and the whole system. All is not harmonious here 10 years after court-ordered busing began. Black enrollment is increasing, and the drift back to the public school system by whites is slowing down. But the police are gone from the school grounds, race relations are better, and most of the children now in the public school system have known no other way. I'll call out the element, you give me the symbol. Test scores for both blacks and whites have risen higher than the national average. Special programs have been put in to improve learning. You write the oh, man. element it stands for. Out in the community, busing has translated into more integrated neighborhoods. It is no longer unusual, no longer dominating conversation here. Charles made a very good adjustment to the uh, busing decision. It has not been all uh, good. See, what happens there have been some right pluses and some minuses, right. but on the whole, I think Charlotte has made a very good adjustment to it. William Poe was opposed to busing 10 years ago when he was chairman of the Charlotte School Board. From a standpoint of uh, social involvement, social improvement, uh, integration, uh, generally race relations uh, working out pretty well, I think it's on the plus side. There is not yet universal acceptance of busing here. Most are resigned to what has happened. Let's have a good time. Some even nourish the hope that it will be reversed, and they are encouraged by their United States senator, who is a leading anti-busing advocate. Forced busing is the greatest folly ever perpetrated upon uh, the children of this country. Uh, it has done no good. It has done irreparable harm. I say if any, in any community, if you can come up with a plan that accomplishes desegregation, great. That's fine. You, if you don't have to use a single bus, that's great. But if you can't do it, let's face it, it's time for us to move in. We're at the, the last end of the 20th century. It's time that the black be totally integrated into the, uh, the society that we have. Like most American communities, Charlotte is not yet totally integrated. But after 10 years, many agree this is not a bad beginning. It oh, reads CBS News, Charlotte, can't North Carolina. can integrate oil and water either.
Yeah, they forced that shit on me. Yeah. Damn, I feel bad for the You can mix up the oil in the water, but after 30 years, you'll have the oil and the water separate again. Yeah, no choice. You had you had to sit next to that Harambe in class. Damn. Or, wor or worse, you end up with oily water. <laughs> the Supreme Court, by the way, refused today to curtail the authority of the Justice Department to go to court to force public schools to use busing where segregation exists. A suit against the government on that point had been filed. So, yeah, so we're back. After all that shit, we're back where we started in 2024. Wow. Wow, we're back where we started. I mean, it was a, a I used way to miss about sound. 25 days. Hey, this, hey, this is it. I used to miss about 25 days out of school year down Lombard. And now that I've came to, to Dunbar, I haven't missed any days so far. And I think it's because n no one puts you around to make you learn at their speed, learn at your own speed, at your own rate. And, oh, yeah, this uh, nigga retarded. You open space. You can work when you feel like it and not if you don't. No one makes you do anything here. Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's heaven that's for a son, man. You ain't got to learn that's shit. That's I used to miss about 25 heaven. days out of school year down Lombard. And now that I've came to, to Dunbar, I haven't missed any days so far. And I think it's because n no one puts you around to make you learn at their speed, learn at your own speed, at your own rate. And uh, you have open space. You can work when you feel like it and not if you don't. No one makes you do anything here. Um, I had no reason to cut classes because the, I like my teachers and I like the work that I'm doing there in Dunbar. Oh, good. Well, um... I think our school is different because we're teaching else the, the members in the school are teaching the students a sense of responsibility such that when we face the outside world we'll be able to cope with it you know because at other schools you get in there you learn things but you don't learn what life is really all about and yeah man 1975 all things considered man sons just presented differently she's got her natural nappy hair yeah she 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 looks good with with it better than these hoes nowadays and she's i like the weave better but she speaks <laughs> yeah no doubt i mean we indoctrinated with weave but what i'm saying yeah is that's like, probably yeah. she speaks like a human being even yeah. though she may be just a hood rat she's probably a hood rat but that's just how hood rats were in those days. Yo, you these sons are... In Dunbar, we learn... Yo, sons were so fucking... Hot. It's just, they just seemed way more polished back, back around these times. Well, yeah, because the dad's from the home, right? Nah. It ain't got nothing to do with <laughs> 70s? That, <man>. <laughs> 70s, they was supposed to be already gone. Yeah, because that was yeah. welfare. Well, back I then, like... The I don't white think society you needed. was like on their ass still, kind of like they they had a reason to perform. Now they I don't. don't. Think, I don't think you need a dad to not sound retarded, though. Yeah, true indeed. Yeah, it's it's. I think it, I think it's something else, man. Um, but but yeah, I, you had the same issues like we talked about last night. Like there's murder, and just all the all the murder in this city is being done by blacks. The schools, the the test scores are abysmal. But these people still just sound different. It just, it just, it's just weird. And at the same time, we find life is really all about. So we, when we get out here to face it, we'll be able to stick with it. Uh, Dunbar is my third high school. I've been to Milford Mill High School out in Pikesville, and I'm 26. Douglas High School. This this son turned bouncing around from high school to high school. Yeah, he's 30. He sounds like he sounds like. Fucking you know, like fuck a fucking goddamn uh, orator, a uh, thespian, or some shit, man. And out of the three, Dunbar tops them because they have a whole lot to offer. And I think every student should take advantage. Of, every student that's attending the school should take advantage of all the facilities and get with the teachers because they're here to help help everyone, you know, to uh, succeed and uh, what they want to become or whatever and uh, the school is just fantastic uh, you know. he sounds second generation paul lawrence dunbar high school 
is an unusual facility in a city undergoing a crisis in education. It is both new and attractive, but perhaps more important, it is the only school in Baltimore City which has significantly reduced its absentee rate during the past four years. The how and why of this reduced absentee rate may be the oh, real dear. story of Dunbar, where each day more well, they're, they're, they're hanging their hat on reducing the absentee rate. They ain't talking shit about test scores. They ain't talking about grades. They ain't talking about we. Yeah. This is the school that this is our best school because they reduced the absentee rate. Yeah. That shows you that these niggas was, was still retarded back then. They just they just spoke more properly. <laughs> they still were retarded, but you know Properly it was, was harder to detect it. More and more students are counted among the present. Dropped out of school early so I could get me some paper. <laughs> That's a good book. I don't mind you getting knowledge about the game. You did. So that's a bird. 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 This, it, it, the fact that they this is like something to brag about is just embarrassing, man. That perhaps 30,000 students a day in the city are out of school without a legitimate reason. That the truancy rate is rising. And that reports and studies notwithstanding, not much is being done to solve the problem. It was discovered, however, that in one school, the absentee rate has been reduced from 30% to 18%. A distinct reversal of the trend toward greater absenteeism since 1970. Yeah, they did a whole fucking special because one fucking school in the Sun City. <laughs> Unless it seemed logical to take a longer look at this one school. Yeah, that is insane, man. The, the bar is in fucking the core. Of, the bar is at the Earth's core, man. <laughs> oh. Done to solve the problem. It was discovered, however, that in one school, the absentee rate has been reduced from 30% to 18%, a distinct reversal of the trend toward greater absenteeism since 1970. And thus it seemed logical to take a longer look at this one school, Paul Lawrence Dunbar High, to find out first how it is different from other city schools, and second, if the lessons of Dunbar can be applied to the rest of the city. Of course, Dunbar is a new school, and there are other new schools in the city. The difference is that instead of being planned by educators, Dunbar was planned by ordinary East Baltimore citizens interested in bettering educational opportunities for their children. Representative Hattie Harrison of the Maryland General Assembly was a member of the Dunbar Charette, or brainstorming sessions, which preceded the actual construction of the school a decade ago. They had to um, more or less seek out every avenue possible and for a few years in the early part of the 60s it looked as if it was an impossible thing at one time there were only two or three of us still screaming and we were considered the crazy folk but uh, eventually we began to pick up other folk the parents became a lot more involved uh, the neighborhood people started uh, asking if there was any way that they could help and by doing this, we banded together not only the parents, but anybody that either lived in this neighborhood or worked in this neighborhood. So consequently, we sort of banded together and we started getting to the right people. And this is how uh, the whole thing really got started. And it was after that that we learned that uh, we were going to have to take a look at the total a student that would be here look into the human part of of what would be happening to our youngsters and we found out that uh, by doing Wait. that we couldn't just isolate the student we had to take in the entire everyday living pattern of every student here and that meant going into the home going out into the neighborhood working as best we possibly could to all that to drop Fucking absentees from the thirty percent eighteen percent. Yo, I the, the bar is in the hell of hell, hell's hell. All of this, and you know the you 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 know what she everything she just described is fucking white dollars. White. Dollars. Hey, high school looks different from many other educational facilities. Constructed around a spacious plaza, the new Dunbar is bright and architecturally interesting.
inside, Dunbar is also different from other schools, for it was the decision of the Dunbar Charette to house within the center many branches of public service facilities, such as the Department of Housing, Probation Office, Social Services, Maryland Department of Employment Security, Manpower, etc. All services which are normally scattered throughout the city. Thus, when a parent or youngster needs help from... We got a parole office in the fucking school. <laughs> parole and probation is inside of us. Throughout the city. Thus, when a parent or youngster needs help from one of these facilities or agencies, he goes to his school rather than staying away from it. An important feature of the agencies is that they are not mere referral services, but active branches with the ability to function on the same level as their parent organizations. This interview, for example, is being conducted by a staff worker with the Dunbar branch of the Maryland Department of Employment Security. Let's see if I can get a referral for you. This is location 16-2. I would like a referral on this job. The dot number is 355-878. The order number is 831546. No Another adjunct of the Dunbar Community High School is a child daycare center right on the premises. This facility was planned. So this is you have a, a daycare center and a high school. This school currently has a uh, reading proficiency average of 32%. Oh, that's, hey, that's not bad, though. For uh, So that means they have some students that are proficient in reading. Yeah, or I guess maybe that's not the average. It is actually 32% of the students, but then 8% for math proficiency. That's still really good because most of the schools don't have any students proficient in math in Baltimore. So this is uh, this is actually they're still achieving a higher rate than other schools. So maybe those all those billions of dollars, man, was was worth it, man. The bar is fifty eight percent of students agree they feel safe at school. Well, that's more than half, at least. Yeah, I mean, think about it, man. Yeah, fifty eight percent feel safe. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very good. It should be 100, but, you know, fuck The it. other 42% were beating people up. Yeah, those are the ones that's making people not feel safe. So that small children could be safely cared for, thus freeing older children from missing school because they must babysit for a busy or working parent. In addition, a number of high school age mothers use the daycare facility in order to complete their education, an opportunity that would not be available to them if there were no one to take care of. So you got to put a probation and parole center in the school. So if the kid's on parole, he can just, you don't have to miss school by going to the parole office. He can just, you know, go to, to to a room in the school. You got daycare in the school. And and that's all this to, to lower um, absentees from 30% to 18%. They should put a club in there and then they'd have like, everybody would attend. Yeah, man, this is this is this is. This is <laughs> hey, this hold is on! Sad. I got a. There's a review of the school from a senior who graduated nine months ago. The best part about a Dunbar is the students stay together as a village. We hold each other down. The worst part of Dunbar is the area the school is in. Always something happening and <laughs> happening in the area and are getting in the way of the situation. My experience has been a good experience so far. I really didn't know nobody coming to Dunbar, but in 10th grade, I started growing bonds with students and stuff. Yikes. They're all their children. Here. Here, open back up. There you go. The Dunbar Community High School also differs from other schools in the amount of use it receives. But this is no 8 to 4 facility. Late every afternoon when other schools are locked tight for the night. Activity at Dunbar is just starting. Remedial reading classes, cultural arts, and a variety of other courses and activities are open to youngsters after regular school hours. During the evenings, adults use the facility in many ways. Some have enrolled in adult education courses in order to better their job capabilities. This type of activity, of course, is not unique to Dunbar. What is unique is the degree of involvement of the entire community. 
For in addition to the more formal courses one would expect at the typical night school, there is a broad program of performing arts for all segments of the community. The $300 billion in taxes is represented by the five dollars spent by the federal government. Okay. It, it, it's taken in from the states and the uh, federal and local. As a result, with its programs of music, dance, and theater, the interior of Dunbar Community High School is a beehive of sound and activity during the evening hours. Try to always keep the baby's attention towards the camera. All right. See, that way you can get you get the fish, but you got to turn to the side. It's good using a clock or a toy to keep, 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 keep the baby. Wow, um, fascinating, man. Absolutely, positively fascinating, man. That this is what Paul Lawrence Dunbar, man. They are they are basketball power too. They they sent a lot of dudes to the um, NBA. What um, city is this in? Is this in Chicago? Baltimore. It's oh, Baltimore. Baltimore? Oh yeah. shit! Sounds dangerous. Let's see the sun man right quick, man. I want to see what this sun man is talking about. Cannot mark records on what they think. They are the adult. It brings him around to read with me, and in some cases, to see. How many days do they have me think? And I'm and getting in front of a group of students or getting among a group of students and talking because this brings you closer to them, them closer to you. Uh, an intercom is a cold thing. When the principal comes over the intercom, it's an image. Uh, when the principal gets close to the students, we have our family meetings. Each class, each class level meets once a month. And that means that they have time, whether we agree with it or not, to get things off their chest, to talk about things, to ask questions, to bring out information. And uh, they sort of look forward to the family meetings, and I know I certainly do. <laughs> It's your responsibility to go there, and you have what you're telling me is not recorded. You're telling me something that you think, and until you know that you've been marked. Instilling a sense of responsibility also occurs on an individual level. Like every high school principal in every school system, Julia Woodland handles certain disciplinary problems on a one to one basis. But her philosophy is that the problem is not hers and the schools which must be solved or ruled upon by her. Rather, she believes the best method of solving the problem is to have the student approach it and solve it himself. Unless the student must be helped to talk about the issue and arrive at a conclusion. In this case, the student cannot understand why he was marked late on several occasions when he was actually in school. How many days did they have me marked absent in September, October? November, December. You see what well, I'm what saying? What we try to do is look at a student, not from the immediate infraction or whatever he's brought to the office for as a bad kid or good kid, but we try to look deeper into it to see what his hang-ups are, what's giving him a problem. And times when I when I question them very closely and, 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 and intensely, it might sound like I'm fussing or badgering with them, but that isn't the point. What I'm trying to do is to get him to respond, to communicate with me. And in some cases, students will only communicate when they get a little pressure. You know, they'll sit there and say, yes, no, but when you question him one right after the other, and you, 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 what you're really doing is bringing him around to some area of responsibility. And it, and I think with this kind of exchange between the student and the adult, it brings him around to realize because sooner or later, if you sit there long enough, that kid's gonna begin to do the talking. And he's gonna begin to show you areas where he's gonna be responsible, where it's important to him. And this is what we're trying to do, you know, rather than to just give him some directions and send him away, you know. Did you record a late pay? Teachers cannot put mark, cannot mark records on what they think. They are in the classroom, Miss Woodland. She gave me my bus ticket. Okay, but how was she to know that you were present for the day? You know, students come in here and get a hospital slip, take care of some business in the guidance office, and they're not in school for that day. I'm talking about you get in order for you in order for a student to get their bus ticket, they have to go to the homeroom class, right? They teachers have to put their names in the book. 
to make sure they got them right. But that doesn't prove that you were here for the whole, you know what I'm saying. You know just what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. If, I'm saying that if you don't get marked on the record present that you're asking, I don't care what you come in here and do. That's what I'm saying. And you know that, don't you? Right? It's like same thing. No, it's not. You could come in this building and stay all day long, and, and technically you're trespassing. But until you get yourself on the record, you are absent. You know that. That's why you're sitting there arguing. Because you know what I'm going to find when I go to look. Because well, you're going to look and bring it to me, aren't you? Me and Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. I don't, Mr. Brown. Wow. Um, fascinating. Um, great show, man. Any final thoughts, man? We was kings. It just comes back to no solutions. Yo, I ate the cucumber yesterday. Never felt so wrong. Oh, wow. It's crazy, man. It, you, you know, cucumbers. Whether it's no solutions or not, maybe there is a solution. I can't imagine what it would be, but it's not going to be a glider thing. They, they can't fix this. If it's ever going to get fixed, it's got to come from the suns themselves. Interesting. Can't so, fix nature. So, so what you're saying is no solution. <laughs> well, I mean, pessimistically, yeah, that's what it comes down to. It's, it's what it's historic, historically seems, but no solutions unless is really what I'm saying. Full circle, huh? Yeah. Basically, same black channel, same black channel. Out of here, peace up.